Hello, welcome to episode 90 of the Not Joanna Eggs podcast. 90! Gosh, it's bonkers, right? Anywho, this week I am talking with a friend of mine named Charlotte, who is from the Tabletop Potluck podcast. We are talking about the movie Scary Godmother. Unfortunately, Tracy could not join us. She was feeling under the weather when we recorded, and she told me to soldier on without her. So, uh, please enjoy this episode of me and Charlotte talking about Scary Godmother. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I hope that you enjoy. Thanks for listening. Hello, welcome to another episode of Not Joanna Eggs podcast. I'm Robbie. You will be shocked to find that you will not hear the dulcet tones of Tracy today. She's feeling under the weather and asked us to record without her. So today I have a guest, Charlotte. Hello, it's me, Charlotte. Hi. (laughs) So Charlotte is a friend of mine. We did work together on IPM, that episode that I keep talking about. Indeed. And she has her own podcast, uh, Tabletop Potluck. Yes. You can find us on all the social media under Tabletop Potluck. Yeah. So they're a fun little actual play podcast that jumps around in systems so if that's your jam so i asked charlotte on to review something seasonally appropriate of her choice (laughs) and uh would you like to tell us what that is charlotte we're gonna be talking about scary godmother today i always forget the subtitle of this movie uh scary godmother halloween spooktacular (laughs) yes so, if you're not familiar, uh, Scary Godmother Halloween Spooktacular is a 2003 animated, I guess it's a movie technically, it's only like 40 se- it's yeah, only about it's, 45 minutes. It's so. a tight under 60 minutes. Yeah, so, which, you know, totally fine by me, as movies tend towards length anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I appreciate this. Um, so, it is... Based on a series of books written by Jill Thompson, who also did the some of the script for the movie. Yes, she was a co-author on it. She's also done a lot of big illustration work. I think she illustrated parts of The Sandman, as well as a bunch of other DC comics. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's something else. Yeah. I did not realize that she was so... Uh, that's not... I mean, I guess that's not too shocking because I guess so when they were working on putting the thing together initially, they had animated it or they had drawn some of the characters more like her watercolor illustrations from her books. Yeah. And she did not want that. What? Of, can we talk about how much of a freaking power move that is? <laughs> like, she's like, no, 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 no. Don't do 2D. Only I can do 2D. I do, do 3D. 3D. That was, that's, it's an interesting move. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know, Jill, but you know, you do you, girl. You know, I actually, I have my own uh, six degrees of Kevin Bacon story for Jill Thompson. So I guess it's six degrees oh of Jill God. Thompson. Um, but she was my ex-boyfriend's upstairs neighbor in his apartment complex. <laughs> what? And I know this because... <laughs> I know this because she posted it on Twitter that someone stole her bicycle. And then Did the your next boyfriend steal no. her bicycle. <laughs> no, no, no. So the next day I was talking to my then boyfriend and his mom and they mentioned that, oh, someone stole our upstairs neighbor's bicycle. And I was like, D- did it look like this? And I showed them a picture in the tweet and they were like, yeah. And I was like, your upstairs neighbor is Jill Thompson. <laughs> That is wild. Right? It's it's so bizarre. That is so nutty. Oh my god. All right. Anyway, back on track. You're like just adjacent to (laughs) Jill Thompson. Okay. uh, So, Scary Godmother, again, it's a short uh, thing. Uh, Would you like to give us a short synopsis? Yes. Uh, So, our story takes place on October 31st, Halloween, of course. Of course. The asshole child jimmy is is tasked with babysitting his little cousin hannah marie 
He doesn't mm-hmm. like Hannah Marie. He thinks she's a scaredy cat. They, He and his friends want to go trick-or-treating by themselves. So he concocts mm-hmm. this genius plan to scare her half to death by l- basically making her go into an old abandoned house into the basement by herself uh, to scare her so she runs home crying to her parents. What happens yes. instead is she meets her scary godmother in that house. Uh, her scary godmother whisks her away to, uh, what do they call it? Like the fright? Uh, oh, yeah. I don't remember what don't, they call it. It's something I weird. I was going to say fright zone, but that's Shira. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a different thing. Uh, uh, some other alternate Halloween dimension where the she's. Fright side. Fright side, yes. So she whisks her away to the fright side. Um, Hannah Marie is deathly afraid of monsters. She thinks that they eat oh, yeah. little girls. She's terrified of them. That's how she was so easily scared by Jimmy. But when she gets to the fright side and uh, her scary godmother's party, she meets a whole colorful cast of monster characters. And she learns that, hey, maybe the monsters aren't so bad after all. Mm-hmm. And then they help her pull a prank on Jimmy and his friends. <laughs> yes. And he gets what he deserves. Yes. So that's like the rough thing. Among the characters we meet in terms of monsters, there's Mr. Scully Pettibone. Scully. Scully, Scully, Scully. Scully is... He's the skeleton ooh, in the I, closet that everyone he has. He's the skeleton in the closet. Uh, everyone has their skeletons in the closet, and it's him. And uh, he is... Who? <laughs> he is... Uh, unambiguously gay Flam- it's flamboyant like, is the word i would flam- use flamboyant he reminds me of ah oh crap what's the guy's name do you did you ever watch bewitched uh no not really damn it <laughs> um there was a character uncle arthur who the actor who played him was gay mm. paul lind and he he was also templeton the rat in charlotte's web <laughs> And he uh, he was definitely gay, but he thought that it was like his little secret that no one knew, <laughs> and everyone knew it was not <laughs> at all shocking. Um, and that's how I feel Scully is. I feel yes, like Scully pretends he's a skeleton literally in the closet. Um, yes. I don't know if it's good representation or bad representation, but I do love him. I. I- I kind of love him. I think part of it is just that I think anytime you have a skeleton in a top hat, that's just kind of a boon for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. I'm just, I'm always into that. He cares Um, very much about his hors d'oeuvres and canapes. God, he does. He is, (laughs) he's just all about those hors d'oeuvres. He works so hard. He did. I'm very proud of him. Yes. There's Harry, the werewolf. Mm Mm-hmm. There's Count Max, Ruby, and their son, Orson, who are all unshockingly vampires. And then there is uh, the one that scares Hannah the most, Bugaboo. He's a monster under the bed. He's I great. Lo- I, I love Bugaboo. I, I also <laughs> love Bugaboo. I love him. So one of the things I love about him is that he he sounds kind of like a New York kid. Yeah, it's so great. Like, <laughs> it's really funny to me. Hey, I'm a monster here. Hey, uh, you know, uh, I just don't understand. I'm not going to eat you. You do, you, uh, I get paid because of you. <laughs> yeah, so his job is to actually scare children. Through him, Hannah Marie learns that monsters don't eat children. Otherwise, yes. he wouldn't be able to get his paycheck because there'd be no children left for him to scare. Yes. Can we talk about the fact that at one point they order pizza and because Harry, the werewolf, is uh, extremely hungry in general. Just a glutton. Just a glutton, uh, both as a person and for punishment. (laughs) uh, He orders 12 pizzas. Yeah. And so none of them have money. So they basically (laughs) mug Bugaboo, more or less. (laughs) Pretty like much. they definitely jump on top of him and take his money. It's all in good fun. Yeah, I mean, you know, someone's got to pay, and apparently he's the only one with a job. Mm-hmm. Well, so scary godmother is a witch. Yes, clearly, and she's actually I. She's voiced by a woman named Tabitha Saint Germain, mm-hmm. who I am sure I have heard this name before. But I went to look her up on uh, 
Wikipedia and my Wikipedia page said, fuck you, <laughs> uh, because she has done so much stuff. Like, she is huge, so. That makes she's complete in, sense. <laughs> yeah, she's in all kinds of stuff. But she, I um, think she also voices Ruby as well. Yes, she does. She does. Yeah. So, Scully and, or no, not Scully, Max and Scully are voiced by the same guy, and then Harry is, does not voice anyone else. Uh, yeah. I think he voices Bugaboo, actually. I'm. I just. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So. Wow, a lot of dynamic the, range in the cast. Yeah, I was gonna say everybody's pulling double duty yeah. here. Yeah. Um, and you'll recognize if you think that either of those voices are familiar. Gary Chalk is Bugaboo and Harry, and I think yeah, he's the guy who does the voice of probably best known for Optimus Prime <gasps> slash. What? Yeah, uh, for yeah, from Transformers Beast that Wars. That makes He's so Primal. much sense. I'm thinking yeah. about it now, and I can hear it in my head. Yeah, and then uh, the guy Scott McNeil voices Scully and Max, and he also does a ton of voice acting the one that is specific to me is he's he's also in beast wars what the hell <laughs> <laughs> um but so no what he swear on this podcast i yes okay, i do not care good. <laughs> he also does the voice of piccolo in dragon ball z which oh, is what i recognize him from yeah in addition to you know like a dozen other voices because especially in the old dub they did they just just use the same guy over and over it's fine yeah yeah i mean voice there are only like five voice actors in the world and they're all on yep. Critical Role. Yeah, I was going to say, there's uh, <laughs> Matt Mercer, Steve Bloom, uh, and those are the two I know. <laughs> the only two that matter. That, maybe. Uh, <laughs> That's not true. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> not at all. I love that they call the abandoned house that they uh, send Hannah into the spook the house. The spook house. The spook house. It's full of CIA agents. Yep. There's just tons of spies. It's great. Um, um, oh, oh, can we talk about the older kids' Halloween costumes? I do. Yes, please. Okay. So I think we're first introduced. Oh, my goodness. I'm forgetting her name. Um, Katie. 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 Uh, she's a cat. Pretty standard. Um, yeah. Then uh, what's the name? Bert? Bert? No, Daryl. There's Daryl. Yeah. Okay. Daryl is the candy. Daryl is the piece of candy. <laughs> Which is a, gr a great Halloween costume idea, by the way. I yeah, I I, I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's very funny. I do think he's. I think they try to make him like kind of a ditz almost because he's like, well, I'm dressed as a candy, so maybe they'll think their candy is too small and give me more candy. Yeah. <laughs> as though somehow they won't realize he is a boy in a candy costume. As if that makes any amount of sense. E yes. That's why like the banter between the older kids is just like peak kid talk oh my god i think it's, it's excellent great. it's very well written where it's just like these mm -hmm. are just kids dicking around on halloween being idiots mm -hmm. jumping on gravestones in the cemetery yeah as you do. kids <laughs> it's great uh, and then we have the one kid who is a baseball player in an suv fully loaded fully loaded <laughs> <laughs> And then that's uh Daryl is that kid. Or no, damn it, Bert. Bert, damn it. yeah. Um and then Jimmy it was dressed as the devil quite aptly. Yes. I love that Jimmy's costume, if you pay attention, you can see that they just safety pinned the tail off. That's really adorable. There's a it lot is, of attention to detail. For for something that was animated in two thousand three, it it holds up fairly well, like there are parts it, of it where I'm like, ooh, that doesn't look so great anymore. But, I mean, there is a lot of attention to detail and things like that. And the backgrounds look beautiful. I love the way the backgrounds look. I think it's just a matter of how it ended up looking. But certainly the way that the backgrounds, especially houses, look, mm -hmm. they look they look like the now more common sort of like cell shaded painted over thing. Yeah. As opposed to like just 3D animated. Yeah, pretty kind of time yeah so in that way it's really cool and the character designs are super one of the things i like is the character designs are so kind of weird mm -hmm. uh which is really i mean that's again sort of an homage to jill thompson's original books so that was i really enjoyed that i'm sad there wasn't an actual ghost in this yeah well they, she, had the, she has the ghost cat that shows up in like one scene Ah. 
but more ghost cat. More, more ghosts, please. There is a sequel. It's called Jimmy's there Re- is. or Revenge of Jimmy or Jimmy's Revenge. Yeah. Um, uh, that's from, I want to say 2004? 2005. Because um, um. this released, so this released in 2003 in non-American countries and then came to Cartoon Network in 2004, the original movie. Yes. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, 2005 was the second. So I don't know if I don't remember that one as well as I remember this one. Uh so I couldn't tell you if there was a ghost in it or not. <laughs> I think what happens mainly is that the big kids meet all the monsters? Question mark. Don't quote that... me on that. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Fair enough. I wa- I watched this movie a lot as a kid. Anytime it was on Cartoon Network around Halloween, I was like, "Yes, scary godmother. <laughs> Why don't I have a scary godmother?" I do kind of wish I had a a strange red-headed witch to guide me yes. on Halloween. Yeah, the funny thing about Scary Godmother is she looks just like Jill Thompson. <laughs> she she kind of yeah. does. <laughs> Jill Thompson, is this in fact just your self-insert witch fan fiction, I guess? I, mean, I don't hey, know what we would call it. I would want to be a cool witch Scary Godmother in a nice haunted house with a pumpkin patch too, so I don't blame her. I mean, yeah, that's fair. One thing that, like pops up in the movie is that like count max essentially has like social anxiety yeah it's like, very oh. sweet oh buddy i feel you yeah and then ruby Me comforts too. him and he's able to you know she's like well these people are our friends they have no reason to think you're boring or hate you it's a very sweet scene it is actually it's just it's so unexpected yeah I also love, like, just on a design level, I really enjoyed Orson. Yes. I don't know what it is about this, like, goofy, dorky kind of vampire child, but I love him. It's really great. When he's talking to Hannah Marie for the first time, it's the first human he's met, and he has all these questions <laughs> about, like, do you, it's like, oh, do you sleep in your own coffin? She's like, what? I don't sleep in a coffin. He's like, what? You're homeless? I love that so much. It's very cute. Yeah, and then they become being friends. Like... It's very. This movie yeah, is very like sweet. It is. It is. It's a great movie for kids just learning that, like, oh, you know, the monsters aren't always bad. Sometimes they're scary, but you know, they're not they bad. Can still be, they can still be friends. Yeah. I love. <laughs> I forgot about that. So there's the um one thing that's amusing to me is the older kids like so they're. They're trying to scare Hannah by sending her into the spook house, and their thought is we're going to sit outside and wait for her to come out so that we can then go tr- bring her home and go trick-or-treating without her. Mm-hmm. So they end up just spending the night sitting outside. Yeah, they waste their Halloween. I know, but they get into like some weirdly like three stooges esque kind of shenanigans. Oh yeah, they take they vote on who's the leader and it's a tie. They each vote for themselves. <laughs> they each vote for themselves. My favorite was them playing rock, paper, scissors. Yep. <laughs> because rock, paper, scissors. Everyone chooses rock. Like four times. Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> and somehow Jimmy knows everyone else well enough to know that if he says, you can't all pick rock, they're all going to pick scissors for some reason. He. That's why he's the leader. Yeah, I guess. Because he knows. I like that. And then later there's a moment, I think uh, the other three are arguing and Jimmy, he just suddenly raises his hand and slaps all three of them (laughs) again, like three stooges style to get him to calm down. Yeah. Another thing about this movie, and I guess kind of as a product of when it was made, is that I feel like 3D CGI animation wasn't totally as defined as it is now. So you have a lot of these like three stooges that like, stuff that looks like it belongs more in 2D animation in this movie. Like, when they're all running out of the house, it's like they're kicking up the dust clouds and moving their feet real mm-hmm. fast. Um, it, I, and I love that. I think this is, you know, this is before CGI knew what it wanted to be. And mm-hmm. there was a lot of room for them to play with how they wanted to do things. And that is very cool. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a lot of this movie that kind of, like, kind of has in some ways the kind of feel of something a little older Mm -hmm. just in terms of like like the dust clouds and like some of the sound cues and things like that really feel like they're from like a 90s cartoon or something yeah definitely also on that note there are more puns in this thing than i think 
any number of Scooby-Doo episodes. Oh, yes. The Buffet. That one the was buffet. my favorite. Did they my call favorite... each other broommates, or did I, was I just hearing yes. that? Yes. Okay. No. Broommates. Broommates. Uh, Perfect. So that's really funny for me, because when we were in college, my best friend, his roommate just one day left. Like, he just one day moved out. Huh. <laughs> and so my so my my buddy he had this whole room to himself and so as a joke he put like fake glasses or something on a broom and called him broommates. Ah. <laughs> That's, so That's really like, good. Yeah, for the rest of the year anytime he's like fucking broommates over here making so much goddamn noise. It's just my broommate, man. It's just being a jerk. That is absolutely hilarious. Oh, the fucking... So when they scare the kids at the end, I love that scene for because it's so over the top. Yes, oh but my especially, god. But especially right before they leave, Harry is just... Milking it. Just milking it, just oh. like... No one asked you to vamp, Harry. You can stop <laughs> any time. So for, for the listeners, there's a, a little plot, a subplot where... Hannah Marie's dad gives her this flashlight, says it'll protect her from the yes. monsters if she shines it on them. Um, there's a scene when she first meets Bugaboo where she uses a flashlight on him, and he's just like, "What? The, what is this? Like, I'm totally unaffected." <laughs> just... Scary Godmother has a great save where she's like, "Oh, Hannah Marie, flashlights only work for monsters who live in the closet. Bugaboo lives under the bed." Yes, which is a great oh, was... way to just like not ruin her childlike innocence in this yeah right in this effect um but then later when they're scaring all of the kids she uses her flashlight to quote you know kill the monsters and save yeah. the day for her cousin and his friends um and they mm -hmm. all have these incredibly dramatic death scenes that are absolutely fantastic yes i love that the scary godmother can just melt yes she just melts like Holy shit. <laughs> I wish I could melt on command. I'm melting. <laughs> One great Wizard of Oz reference. Oh, yeah. Always. Oh, I love... So when the kids are sitting outside, there's a moment where we cut back to them, and Bert is just standing in the background saying, Door ajar. Yes! Door ajar. God! And Jimmy is just so fucking pissed at him. I love dumb kids doing dumb stuff. It is just perfect. There's just something so good about it sometimes. Yeah, and it's like, and they're smart enough to like know about things, you know. So all yeah. of their banter is like still very intelligent, but it's also still very much like, oh, they're just kids dicking around. Yeah, well, that's why I love. It's great. I think. Bert is probably of those three. He might be my favorite toss up between him and Katie. I think but so. I love him just because he's like, oh, I'm a baseball player. I'm a baseball player with my new SUV. Fully loaded, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's exactly as you say, right? He knows just enough about like cars to know that there's like a fully loaded, but he doesn't quite know what that means. Yeah. So he's also got like a laser. <laughs> yeah, laser cannon. I think at one point he like radios in, so he pre pretends to radio in something on the car. And they're just like, the car doesn't have freaking like radio. He's like, yeah, it does. It's fully loaded. Yeah. It's like breaker breaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good joke. Yeah. I do. I oh. I get like a childlike joy when I whenever I watch this movie. I think it's great. And like you said, it is a tight 47 minutes, which is the perfect length for a children's movie. Easily yeah, I think digestible. So. Yeah, I was uh I sat down to watch it and I was like, "All right, I've just got to sit here and watch this thing for like an hour and a half." Nope. 47 minutes. 47 minutes. I was totally fine. I, I was sick on Thursday and I was like, I should rewatch Scary Godmother before I am on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> so then I was like, all right, you know, I've got a couple hours before my significant other gets home. And I was like, oh, wait, I was, remember, right, it's only 47 minutes. Like, I don't need all that much time. Yeah. If oh, the whole man. thing is on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> fun it fact. is. I. <laughs> Yeah, there's uh when I was trying to find out more about like the production stuff, I just found more sites that stream it. So yep. <laughs> it's not hard to get hold of hold of the thing. 
so I don't know if you're interested in, I mean, do you have anything else to say in general about this? Um, no, I, I just really like it. I was very excited to talk about it just because it's, I, I feel like it's maybe not something that is as well known as like Nightmare Before Christmas or something like sure. that. Um, so I just wanted to bring this to light. If you have like a little cousin who is staying with you for Halloween, maybe show them Scary Godmother. Yeah, if you got a kid of like, actually, so I think a kid of probably like somewhere between about six and ten is probably about the right number for that. But that does bring up the one last question I have, which is how old do you think the old, the big kids were? Um, My guess would be like 10, 11, 12. Yeah, that was kind of what I was thinking, because I'm like, they're clearly not like quite teenagers no, they're yet. The, they're the quote big kids, which it, in my mind is like 10, 11, 12. Not, yeah, not quite fair. preteens, but almost there. Yeah. Well, and there's the one joke. <laughs> I actually love it. It's one of the things that made me like Katie is that she's trading candy with uh, Daryl. Mm -hmm. And she goes, all right, I'll trade you this and three kisses. He's like, I don't have any kisses. And he's like, oh. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. She so, likes it. Old enough to get crushes. <clears throat> yeah, right. So. Um, but yeah, it's a cute, fun time, I think, if you have some nostalgia for it, or if you have uh, young children in your life, definitely. definitely give it a watch. Yeah, and um, give, give the kid the books, too. <laughs> yeah, because they're, I mean, they're similar, I'm sure, and there's, like, a bunch of them, to my memory. Yeah, there's a whole let's, lot. Yeah, let's see. Oh my god, there's also comic books, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, so. oh, I think, I think the books are the comic books. Oh, okay. Oh, no, there's books and comics. Oh, what? well, damn. Prolific. That's wild. Scary godmother Good. everywhere. Get after it, Jill Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so before we wrap up, Charlotte, is there anything you'd like to plug? Uh, yeah, so you can find my podcast, Tabletop Potluck, on anywhere you get your podcasts. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the Breb with a B. Because cornbread was taken. Cornbread was taken. Uh, <laughs> and also, I love cornbread. So. Yes. There you go. Uh, perfect. You can find me, as always, on Twitter at lobster underscore writer. Uh, you can find Tracy at TC Troushed on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can find our show website at notjoannaeggs.tumblr.com. And you can find our podcast. Well, if you are, don't know where you can find the <laughs> podcast, how are you listening? Ridiculous. Who are you and where are you? What kind of strange powers do you have? Are you on All the right, right side? Oh my god. They've made it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you so much for joining me, Charlotte. Thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. Absolutely. And thank you for listening. Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to another episode of Not Joanna Eggs. Our intro music is Don't Hold My Breath by Ben Briggs, and the outro is Wet Dreams by Phonetic Hero. Both were found on ocremix.org. If you enjoyed this podcast, please remember to like and subscribe on whatever platform you use. Not Joanna Eggs, because animation is for everyone. Thanks.